Been coming off the bench a lot this season and really making an impact. Great to see it. Great to see him getting a start here this evening. The sun has just finished setting over the hill here at the Bell in Lexington. First kick underway as it's Kentucky and Old Dominion. 63 degrees, 45% humidity, an absolutely beautiful night, especially for this time of the season. And the Cats get it started right off the bat. Inside of 10 seconds. They've wanted to be aggressive at the beginning all season. That's probably the most obvious example we've seen so far. Right, and I think we've seen in games against Louisville, against Dayton, what happens when they don't start quick and start early. So, Gavin, you're an old pro at this, okay? You know this game as well as anybody. Tell us about Gavin's goals for tonight. What are we looking for? You know, I think, you know, for Old Dominion, we're certainly expecting to see them counterattack a lot against Kentucky. We know Kentucky like to get tight and be compact. But going forward, they tend to open themselves up, and they're going to hope they can ca capitalize on that a little bit. And, you know, we see those, those five across the back, those five defenders there for Old Dominion. Don't be surprised when we see that open up and both of those wingbacks start to push forward into midfield and offer a little bit of a different picture here for Old Dominion. And as for the Wildcats? You know, as, as I've mentioned, this team is a disciplined team when they're at their best. Um, and I think they will, they will try and stay that way. And of course, we've said it all season. We've seen it time and time again. Bjorgerson, Bjorgerson, Bjorgerson. Goals, goals, goals. <laughs> Absolutely, he's done. A phenomenal job on the attack for the Wildcats. And tonight being his senior night, he has some family, friends, of course, in attendance here at the Bell, as do all six Wildcats who were honored here pre-game. Congratulations to them. Senior night, always a big deal. Yeah, it's a, it's a special time. And you've, you've, you've got an extra something in the juice and in the tank, I think, during senior night. Your parents are in, your family's in. You're really out to impress. This is the culmination of four, five, for some of these guys, six years of hard work. And they'll be out to make an effort. Cats are pressuring Old Dominion's keeper early on. Michael Stra Stratham has certainly been outstanding for the Monarchs so far this season. But this is going to be a big test for him. Head man in charge for the Wildcats right here. It's Johan Settergren in his 11th season as Kentucky's head coach. And as he heads into the postseason with this group of teams, this is certainly a position he's been close to before. But this is definitely one of the best positions his team has found themselves in at this point in the year. Right, what a job he has done time and time again to build this program bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a player's dream. He gets the best out of any player that he brings in. He develops players and he gets the results. Three-time Conference USA Coach of the Year back in the day when the Wildcats were in that conference. Of course, first year now in the Sun Belt. I'd say he has a shot at that one too. I think so too. It's certainly looking that way. We'll see here in about 87 minutes. On the other side of the pitch, here's head coach Alan Dawson, his 27th season with Old Dominion. He's the program's all-time winningest coach. 257 wins, really unprecedented. Yeah, we talk about legacies. Dawson's one of those guys. Really has something special down there in Old Dominion four-time conference coach of the year, three conference titles. He's taken this team to 12 NCAA tournament appearances. Another guy who just simply gets the best out of his players. So we talked about it a little bit up top, Gavin, but this season has certainly been exciting for the Monarchs. They've already defeated two other top 25 ranked teams. Of course, that's what they're looking to do here tonight. Overall, that record stands at six, five, and two. But like I mentioned, two of those wins coming over top 25 ranked teams, a two nil win over number 20 Campbell at the time, and then a two one win over Marshall. And that's the one we think the UK coaches probably spent quite a bit of time studying this week. Yeah, you know, it's all, I think for um, from an old Dominion perspective, it's always difficult at the beginning of the season when two not just two teams come into your conference, two top teams come into your conference. One, a national championship winner in the last handful of years in Kentucky, who have knocked on that door in the last few years. So, you know, to, to be where they are, they will be delighted. Jorgelsen went up for a header opportunity last time on that side of the field. Just 
just about five minutes into this one, and the tempo is certainly fast. Yeah, it certainly is, and as it always here in Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky, like we've said, second ranked team in the country right now. Nine wins, zero losses, just five draws on the board. Like we said, one of just three teams that's still unbeaten this year in Division I NCAA soccer. Second in the country, that's the highest in UK history and leading the conference in just about every single statistical category you could want to lead the conference in. It's got to give you a lot of confidence here at the end of the season looking toward conference play to have not been beaten and to have that chip on your shoulder is so important to a team like Kentucky here. And of course it just sets you up potentially for a much, much better road down the season once we get into that postseason. Right, certainly does, certainly does. You can't beat those points on the board. It's been wide open here, these, these opening six minutes. Quite a bit of back and forth between these teams. A lot of aggressive, aggressive play up top, fast tempo. But the Monarchs typically play relatively clean, whistled for the fewest number of fouls and yellow cards in the Sun Belt Conference. And Kentucky's not too far ahead of them in that race. No, they certainly, we, we've seen this Kentucky team go toe to toe at times when they've had to. Scrappy game against State and scrappy game against Louisville. Yes. We both enjoyed them. from the corner from Robert Screen goes high. Screen, of course, has been one of the most consistent Wildcats this year, I would say. He's certainly a leader on this team, team captain, no doubt. And you can just tell his calming energy and presence out there is really important to this group. Yeah, he's been a, a stalwart when available in that right back position. And, you know, we speak to Johan most weeks and just talks about how important his leadership is on the field, off the field. And of course, his talent on the ball, and particularly in around set pieces. In this play right here, we see Casper Grenning go down. He is up now, but you see just a little push there, maybe. Yeah, asking early questions of Aaron Deans. So the Cats will get a free kick opportunity for this one. Grenning is a tricky guy to catch at the, at the best of times. a long 10 yards from the referee. Ball's in, it's Bjorgelsen who gets ahead on it, but quickly brought in by the hands of the keeper who puts the ball back into play. Kentucky just looking to find their shape again. Rodriguez dropping back, Martin Sarida. As he does best, just controlling the direction and the tempo of the game out of that midfield. How important is it for both teams to feel like they're the ones controlling the tempo in a game like this one? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's always helpful when you've got the ball. Um, it's a, it sounds simple and it sounds straightforward, but it's hard, it's hard to execute sometimes. Kentucky like to be in control. They enjoy playing at home. This will be a big part for them is to control the distance and the, and the tempo of what they're doing here tonight. Kentucky looking to get a little bit of speed on that one, but it goes wide left. Kentucky a bit of pep in the step early on here. You see it's Nick Gutman who really pushes it across. And he had a good look at it. What did you see, Gavin? Yeah, certainly. I mean, Gutman's done it all season. He's found little pockets in that final third. And he's really up there in terms of finding assists for his teammates. And his counterpart over the other side, just in on that far post. Just not getting the contact I think he wanted to get. It's a slick night. You know, we, we saw those sprinklers going right up until the start of the game. And it'll be a busy surface.
I see Gutman just tucking in over that far side, stopping that ball, going all the way over into Schmalbach. Kentucky will want to eliminate the natural width that this sort of 5-3-2, 3-5-2 formation that Old Dominion have here. They'll want to get compact in that midfield and stop them switching to play. And you mentioned Schmalbach. He certainly had a big impact on this team over the course of this entire season. Yeah, special player, big leader over on that far side. And they look to find him as often as they can, which is no, no surprise. We see Gutman trying to cut that off early doors here. It's the speedster freshman for the Wildcats, Max Miller, Has, fighting to keep that one in play. Hasn't he been great this season? He certainly has been, and he's being rewarded for it right now. I think we're, we're, we're going to see some more rewards coming his way uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. But already for now, he's 21st on the top drawer soccer's top 100 freshman mid-season list, and certainly think he'll be just as high as that, if not higher, by the end of the year. Right, I'm sure I'm sure every, every scout in the country has Max Miller's name written down in the book. And to do it all for his hometown team has to be special. On the other side, though, a lot of Virginia natives suiting up for Old Dominion tonight. Great piece of play there by Grenning. Just patient, patient, and finding Koopman again over that far side. For guys that play so far apart on the field, they've got a really great relationship. Grenning has just been everywhere already tonight in just 11 minutes of action. He's a hard man to catch. He's fired up for this one, you can tell. You know, that was always one thing I enjoyed as I, as I went through my collegiate career was when senior night came along, despite not being a senior and not being my night, it always meant a lot to go out and try and get a win for those guys. Give them something special. Always nice to be sending off the uh, sending off the veterans with a bit of an honor. And in front of a good crowd tonight here at the Bell. Certainly, you may not be able to see them on your screen. You can certainly hear them. <laughs> Tell us about what we're hearing, Kevin. You know the history of these. Right, it, the, the, the Vuvuzela. Um, you know, popularized in soccer, um, sort of in a global sense, at the 2011 World Cup in South Africa. I remember playing a, a national team tournament, U17 national team tournament, um, in all those stadiums over around Johannesburg, um, er, you know, a handful of months before the World Cup started. And that was the first time I'd ever heard one. And they sounded like they, did, like they sound to you at home. They're loud, and they just keep going. We talked about the lung capacity of some of these fans. Maggie, you're, you're an ex-swimmer. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what it, mean, what it means to be able to sit here and blow into these things all night. Well, it's a little bit of a talent, I would say. I mean, some of the people who are out here showing off their skills are little kids. So if these kids aren't already swimming, they might need to start because right. the lung capacity here tonight at the Bell is off the charts. I'm sure for those of you watching at home, you will be able to hear it because we are sitting very close to several of them. Enzo Maurice trying to mix it up a little bit with the Monarchs. I mean, just look at how deep Old Dominion are. They're really struggling to get, get out of their own half right now. We see lots of fantastic runs up there by Liam Thomas, but just struggling to find his feet and make anything stick. Turnover there by Gutman. When it looked like he was about to break free, you just need to miss one more guy for a shot at the goal. He'll try again, and it's in. He's been active all night. We were just talking about him. Casper Grenning has been everywhere already for the Wildcats, and now he's rewarded for it. And 
rewards his team with one goal on the board 14 minutes in. Yeah, we can see how much that early goal means to him and perhaps more than any other Kentucky player out here. He's worked hard for it. Look how high he's able to get here from an almost standard position. And he jumps in in front of Aaron Dean and just glances that into the far corner. Really sneaks that one in. It looked like it was going to be too high, and then at the last second, that drop into the corner. Very impressive. We, talk, we talked about how, how important Isaiah Bjorgelson is to this Kentucky offense and how good he is in the air. It's important that there are players around him. You've got two and three players sometimes watching Bjorgelson to get yourself in there and go and get your head on it. And for Grenning, he has three assists this year. This is now his sixth goal of the season. He's certainly taken a lot of shots, the most out of any of the Wildcats, 37 shots this season, tied for first in the Sun Belt Conference, and that one certainly paid off. Certainly, nothing, nothing Michael Statham could have done about that. And now the pressure rests on the underdog. We are so close to the end of the regular season. Believe it or not, I think the season has, has flown by a little bit, but we are getting to the end of things, so you have to start looking at the Sun Belt rankings to see where things stand for right now. Here's what's at stake. Kentucky currently first place in the Sun Belt Conference, so if they win tonight, that clinches either the first or second seed of the conference tournament, which means they would get to host postseason games. But that race is not over for Old Dominion either. No, we're right down to the wire here at the end of the season. And it means a lot to be able to host that turn and to be able to stay in control of what you're doing here in that next stage going into conference play. And things really are close up at the top. Marshall is right up there. West Virginia is right up there. All those games are going on tonight as well. And of course, all these teams are back in action coming up on this coming Tuesday. So it's not over by a long shot just after this game tonight. But things could certainly move in either team's favor depending on the outcome of this match. Certainly, we know what college soccer is like. It's, it's anyone's game sometimes. We'll be doing our best, I think, to try and keep you all up at home. Kentucky just struggling to find Bjorgerson here in these opening 15 minutes. You can tell the plan was certainly to go to him early and often because they've been trying to get him those looks already here tonight. And it looked like they were trying to do the same thing there, just slight missed opportunity. Tidy tackle by Miseroli there. We'd expect him just to sit in that sort of number six role, that defensive midfield role, try and tidy things up, stop things in the feet of Bjorgerson. Distribute Messeroli. as he can. Yeah, Messeroli's a transfer from Gardner-Webb. A couple of high-impact transfers on this team. Actually read an article about the importance of the transfers for the Monarchs on their team's website because it talked a lot about head coach Alan Dawson and how the last three seasons haven't been typical for him in this program. Three seasons with losing records in a row, very uncharacteristic for him and the program as a whole. And when he looked at how to reconstruct his roster for this season, he relied on the transfer portal. It's new, no one really knew the impact it was going to have. And you've seen it these last couple of years start to grow and continue to develop. He certainly was able to take advantage of it, grab a couple of players from that portal. And now they're having big impacts on this game and on this team. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we talk about recruiting being, being very proactive habit and activity that coaches do. Transfer portal is often a bit more reactive. Sometimes you don't know who, who's going to be who's going to be in that portal. You know, come the end of the season and the beginning of the next season, and it's uh, it's been making some of those good decisions and certainly a way that I think Dawson has has buoyed and bolstered his existing roster here. You know, you're you're spending as long as Dawson has in the game. There's, there, inevitably there's going to be some ebbing and flowing as far as results go. And don't get us wrong, he's certainly still bringing in high impact freshmen as well, as well as a lot of international talent. 
We'll talk about that in just a minute. But for now, Kentucky lining up for a free kick after a foul. Poor ball Monarchs. by Maurice. What went wrong there for you? I say it, I say it every week. Corner kicks, free kicks, beat the first man. Beat that first line of defense and get beyond the opposing team. Three Kentucky players around Liam Thomas there. A little bit of swaz on that for Martin Sarida. Martin Sarida got the start tonight. Just his second start of the season. What do you look for out of him? You know, he he plays both sides of the ball so, so well. You know, defensively, we see him just outside of your screen at the moment, tidy things up defensively very, very well. He's disciplined and he's calm. And then we see him on the ball, he, distribu he distributes the ball very well, but he can also be incredibly creative at times. One of the most creative players that Kentucky has in this roster and can make something magical happen at any moment in the game. And tell you what, he's got an engine on him. Quiet start from Holstad. Maggie, have you noticed some of the Halloween costumes below us? I haven't. What am I missing? I'm seeing, I see at least two minions. <laughs> Always popular. I've been a minion before. You can't go wrong. No. I'm all for easy. I see Kentucky assistant coach. Sam Brooks' kids dressed up. Hard to tell. And again, we see all the minions just backed into that final third. Inviting that Kentucky pressure. Robert Spreen will handle that throw in for the Wildcats. Kentucky just regrouping. Happy to be on the ball, happy to be in control. I think always important not to panic after an early goal, like you've got to go and get two and three more. They certainly aren't slowing the pace at all. And you can tell. Like you, you said, you just you, you can't be comfortable with one. All right, and, and this is a Kentucky team that enjoys the ball, enjoys being on it, enjoys having it. are so close to the end of this regular season so you hate to look ahead of course if you talk to any player or any coach they'll certainly tell you that they are not looking ahead but we're allowed to okay because the Sun Belt Conference Tournament is coming up very very quickly approaching now being held for the first time since 2020 and the action gets started in just a matter of weeks of course we don't know who's hosting yet we don't know the matchups we're going to see but we do know that it's quickly approaching and that there's still a lot of time for things to change. Hey, and it's our job to speculate, right? <laughs> Certainly looking forward to it. And that's what you work all season for. And with a Kentucky win tonight, they would be able to clinch a hosting spot for that tournament. 
that means they would have either secured either the one seed or the two seed, of course, depending on how the rest of the conference shakes out within the next week or so. But as long as it is a win tonight, things are clinched for them in terms of hosting. Now, if it's not a win tonight, a lot of different scenarios start to come into play, and I'm sure we'll talk about those as the night goes on. But the big one, of course, for them is they want to be at the bell right. in the postseason. Certainly, you always want to be as in, as in as much control as you can. And yeah, it's the, it's the end of the season where we're squeezing up against conference play, and that's when, that's when the cheese gets made. That's when the cheese gets that's made. That's when the cheese gets made. Is that a new one for us? <laughs> I like it. I'm going to try to work that into my everyday life. You see Grasso for the Wildcats sort of steadying things back here in the back line. We haven't talked about him too much tonight specifically, but we certainly have this season. That back line of defense for Kentucky has just been so strong. And a big part of why all those players in midfield and up top get to enjoy the ball so much is because those guys work so hard across that back four. Sorida with the nutmeg. Kentucky's back line being so strong certainly impacts how we look at our keeper statistics in this game on both sides, right? Because for the Wildcats, it's Casper Moles in the box tonight. Save percentage of about 63%, only had to save 15 times this year, allowed nine goals, and then on the other side for the Monarchs. Yeah, certainly. He's had to be a lot more active. Yeah, I mean, you know, goalkeepers are a little bit like referees. That the less we talk about them, the better, as far as they're concerned. For Michael Statham over on the other side, though, for the Monarchs, six foot four freshman leading the conference right now in saves and save percentage. He's six actually in the entire nation with his save percentage, just under 84%. 57 saves this year. He's been very busy. He's, he has stayed busy. He has stayed busy. They're certainly getting the money's worth out of him. Uh, he's a big guy. He's a big guy in the net, in a team that is that is towering above lots of teams across across the conference. Just three players under the height of six feet here in this Old Dominion roster. Very tall team. Going against a Wildcat team that isn't not tall, but they certainly seem a lot shorter in comparison and out there tonight. When you don't have the ball, it doesn't matter how tall you are. Brennan wins that one, and he's off to the races again, looking for number two on the night. He'll take a shot, trying to get the assist of Jorgelsen, but that one is deflected by Old Dominion. Yeah, it looked like Mandir just got himself in a good position. And Old Dominion just not being able to find some of those patterns coming out of their own half here. And connecting with Thomas and Jenkins. And that's really who they have to be looking for at this point in the match. Paul started leaving Thomas deflated, depleted, and dead in his tracks. Miller bringing the speed back up to how he likes things, which is very fast. A lot of footwork out there. Not a lot of guys around here keeping up with Max Miller. Grenning will try to chase that one down, and he does. Inside the white lines with a shot toward the middle. Bjorgelsen gets his chest on it. Gutman just needing half a second to let that bounce. Bjorgelsen just absorbing the impact there of Christensen. Mm -hmm. 
So the Cats now up to five shots on the night. Three of those have been on goal. So goose eggs in those departments for Old Dominion. You see Old Dominion there just trying, just trying to rob a few yards. Christensen back there just trying to walk that, walk that defensive line up a couple of feet. Take what they can. They can spend the rest of the game in their own defensive third here. Kentucky will just come and come and come. Defensively, these teams fall pretty similarly in the rankings, especially if you look at Sunbelt standings right now in terms of goals allowed. Both teams have given up 13 goals this season, so tied for second in the conference. Shutouts, UK's had six of them. Old Dominion has had five. And that's good for first and second in the league, respectively. Yeah, certainly good accolades. Anytime you're, anytime you're keeping goals out, you've got half a chance. You see Michael Eberly check into this match for Old Dominion. Six foot two freshman out of Virginia, one of those local guys we talked about earlier. He did have a goal for the Monarchs in their win against Marshall. So he's one of just several players on this team who understand the stakes involved in tonight's match and also how to play against a higher ranked team. Yeah, they've got a decent rotation up top here and lots of guys that can come in and make a difference and Everly certain, certainly one of those. Well tidied up by Casper Moles, good start in position, good awareness of where he was in relation to his box. The keeper situation for Kentucky this season has been fascinating to watch as the season has developed and I think it will continue to be that way as we get into the postseason. Yeah, you know, it's, it's unusual that you would have the luxury to be able to oscillate between two goalkeeping options. Um, but hey, you know, if you've, got, if you've got two, three goalkeepers to come in and not drop the standard, that's a, that's a brilliant way of developing those players and keeping guys happy. Jenkins just taking a bit of a knock there from that tackle from Rodriguez. That one is saved by the Monarchs keeper. Clean shot. Yeah. Hey, right at him. He's still got work to do. mentioned earlier in this one about the host of international talent we see out there on the pitch tonight. We've seen that of course all season long college soccer just has so much international talent involved in it. But out there tonight 11 countries represented through 20 players. Well, you look down you look down that roster there for Old Dominion, England, Germany, Austria, Iceland, England, England, New Zealand, Italy, Ireland. We know which one's your favorite out of that list. You know, Aaron, Aaron McNally, I think we may see him tonight. You see Aaron McNally here from Anuth University, just up the road from my hometown of Leakslip, County Kildare. Say that hometown again. Leakslip. I like L -E -I -X -L -I -P. it. L-E-I-X-L-I-P. An old shout Viking, out. An old, an old Viking town. I love it. And then, of course, on the other side of this coin, out of the players who are not international, there's 11 of them on the Old Dominion roster from Virginia, six of them from the Virginia Beach area, which is, of course, less than 20 miles away from where this campus is located. So a lot of homegrown talent that they've been able to cultivate and keep in state. Beautiful part of the world. One they were not able to keep, though, Cooper Kieran on the Kentucky roster, also from Virginia Beach, actually went to high school 
with one of the alternate keepers on the Old Dominion roster. So a lot of ties in this sport. Of course, it's a small world out there. But tonight especially, the Virginians really stood out to me on that roster. And Beautiful Virgin save by Casper Virginia is a great, great place for academy soccer. They've produced player and player over the years and lots of great college programs and elite academies. So what you're saying is Virginia is for lovers and soccer players. Yeah. There you go. It just it just wouldn't fit on the on the registration plate. <laughs> I think they need to get that on the license plates over there. You may need to pay extra. Luca Rodriguez getting involved now. Haven't talked about him yet tonight, but of course he's been a key part of Kentucky's defense throughout the entirety of this season. Yeah, you know, a little bit like your goalkeepers and your referees, the, the less you're paying attention to your center back, sometimes the better. And those, you know, I've seen those two players already coming in as veterans into this season, but con continue to mature this season. You know, I talked early on in those opening games about some risks they take on the ball and the willingness to try something sometimes when they're last man and sometimes get away with it. Um, but we see just as the season's gone on that they've done a better and better job at recognizing where and when they can play and when they can't. We've said it all night, but Max Miller's speed once again coming to save the day on that one to keep possession in Kentucky's favor. Holstead will take a shot at that one. Still trying to get Bjorgelson involved in this action. Gutman will try it now. Both teams getting a little mixed up and maybe even tripped up on each other there. Yeah, just a bit of a miscue. Screen will get it to Moles to reset for the Wildcats. Yeah, Old Dominion have just not been able to take the sting out of this game and out of this Kentucky possession. We see all, all but Jenkins in the defensive half. And as he steps over the line, that makes it a full collection. Burning gets another one off, but that one is an easy save. Or stayed in there. You see Schmalbach has just dropped into a more central position, and we've seen Thomas go out at wide left. Old Dominion just doing what they can, I think, to try and get out of their own half, try and find a pattern of play, try and find something going forward, give Casper Moles and these two center backs, Grasso and Rodriguez, something to think about. A couple of substitutions now for the Wildcats. Ben Damji comes in. as well as Brennan Creek, who of course is one of the sensational seniors who have put forth quite a historic season so far for the Wildcats. Six of them who were all honored pregame here at the Bell. Jorgelson of course stands out offensively, but Gutman has had huge impacts. Really every single guy on that list there has had an impact on this team so a far. A lot of big shoes to fill here coming down the line. Hey, but we've seen Ben Damji, he, uh, he has proven that he is, that he is ready and able to step in and fill those shoes next season. Yeah, as we've seen his minutes sort of increase throughout the season, of course, Damji had that hat trick earlier this year. Definitely a capable player, especially down the line once all of these seniors do move on to this next stage of life. Yeah, he is, he is no stranger to some limelight, and I think he can expect, this, he, he can expect that warmth on his face more and more next season. 
sky's the limit for a guy like Ben Damji. A great conversation with his grandparents and his mother and father there a few weeks ago, and you know, really fantastic family. And Ben's a really smashing guy on and off the field. One of the other seniors being honored tonight has checked into the game. That would be Brennan Creek, who has really been able to provide a little extra something for the Wildcats coming off the bench most of the time this season. Yeah. Michael Everly leading his innocence with a referee. To no avail. <laughs> Now, if you find yourself arguing with the referee, you may have already lost. As me and Dave talk about a lot, I don't take my own advice very well. So you're saying you find yourself arguing with referees every now and again, do you? Every Monday. I gotta keep the dust off my old bones. Another senior coming in now for the Wildcats as we begin to near the end of this first half. That would be Justin Schwarf coming in for Kentucky. As well as Mason Leaf 21 you just saw on your screen there with clearly the best hair on the team. Maybe in the whole Sunbelt Conference. Maybe Division I soccer. He's setting a very high bar. That's for sure. Those curls natural, you think? Oh, yeah. He doesn't strike me as someone who spends a lot of time on it. it right. He wakes up like that, in the wise words of Beyonce. I was wondering how long into the season it would take to get a Beyonce reference. In. I can't believe it took us this long, honestly. Second to last game, last home game of the season for Kentucky. I can't believe I didn't beat you to it. Old Dominion, of course, they have one more home game on their schedule. Their senior day will take place back in Virginia this coming Tuesday when they take on Georgia State. Of course, more on the line, of course, for that one. Maybe We've got a little bit of extra Maybe curriculars going on out here there. for Lewis Beckett. Here it is. You're right about that. Tidy, tidy piece of work. Great feet by Ben Damji. Just a slot through his legs and a very frustrated Lewis Beckett getting a hold of his shirt and pulling them back. Little smile on Ben Danji's face there. He knew. So the first yellow card of the night goes against the Monarchs, of course, like we said. Last in Sunbelt play in terms of how many of those they typically earn throughout a night. But they're up early on the Wildcats in that department, at least so far. Yeah, as they get more and more frustrated throughout we may see more and more challenges like that. Tidy, tidy by Rodriguez. That's just the kind of player he is. So consistent, just takes care of business, doesn't have to be flashy, right. doesn't try to be. That's what I call a Rolls Royce. You don't think a Rolls Royce is flashy? Most simple, yet expensive. <laughs> Look at how hard Kentucky work to win the ball back when they lose it. Despite a relatively comfortable position here in this first half so far when they lose the ball, and I think that's a mark. You know, Johan talks about the sort of pillars and principles that this team lives, lives by and dies by, um, and hard work is one of them. And of course, the other one he stresses in all of our conversations with him, and of course in those conversations with his team as well, is to stay humble. And that's not always an easy thing to do, especially when you see that number two up there by your name all season, that the Wildcats have continued to climb up and up and up in the rankings, up and up and up in the Sunbelt Conference standings, currently first in that regard as the regular season begins to draw to a close. 
and somehow they've still found a way to maintain that that sense of humble pie that Coach Settergren right. keeps talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, it's um, and and seeing number one so far this season in the in this in the coaches poll and just dropping down to number two as a consequence of some of those some of those recent ties. And um, but of course, number one as far as the RPI goes. Another yellow card is out. This one goes against the Wildcats. Nice play, Holstad. With some sort of slide tackle. Let's take another look at what went wrong here. You know, I just coming over the top of the ball there a little bit. No, not a lot of malice in it. He's kept his studs down. And just missing the ball enough to warrant the referee's decision. See a little bit of heat in this game. It's not man, Jonas Smallback. Kentucky just need to keep their head here for the next two and a half minutes and see themselves through with the lead in this half. Wildcats take care of that one in a hurry. And like you said, for them, it's just getting out of these next two minutes. And as we've seen with Kentucky a couple of times this season, it can really change the momentum of a game. A go right before the half. Monarchs have got another shot at it with the free kick there after the foul on Mason Lee. And they'll want to be quick with this here. Quick substitution there for the Monarchs. Ben Danji just, just nudging it out over the end line. But like you said, they'll look to get this one off in a hurry. He lines up in the corner. Casper Moles draws that one in. Keeps it in his gloves. And he won't be, on it. He won't be in any hurry time. here. This is the highest up the field we've seen all Dominion. And we see once they can get themselves up, they start to ask some questions of this Kentucky midfield, this Kentucky back four. And with less than a minute left in our first half here, Kentucky is really in no hurry to spend these next 30 seconds or so. You know, absolutely no need for Luis Grasso to play that long ball. Of course he can do that, what do I know? He'll have to make up for the mistake, like you said. Get possession back and take his time that time. You know, I'm sure his coaches are looking and saying, hey, Nine, just keep the ball. Eight, we're, 30 seconds, we're, six, we're 30 seconds away five, from things here. Four, three, two, and that will do it for the first 45 minutes of play here in Lexington as number two Kentucky is up 1-0 over Old Dominion. Gavin, we talked about your goals at the beginning of this match. How did each team execute so far? Be able to secure a hosting position for that conference tournament with a draw or a loss. Everything will end up coming down to the last games of the season coming up early on next week. But of course for Kentucky, they want to take care of business tonight, and a win against the Monarchs would do that. Yeah, and don't be surprised if we see a, an energetic and a fiery first five minutes here from Old Dominion. They're going to have to take a risk here in the second half. I talked a little bit about how pinned back they were in their own defensive third all throughout that first half. And we saw it just in moments and in flashes what they can do to cause Kentucky some trouble once they get beyond their back four and make them ask themselves a question. In the first half, we saw Kentucky take a shot just mere seconds 
into game action. It looks like the Monarchs are trying to do the same thing here. And of course, you have to be able to play that aggressive side of the sport when you are the underdog and you are behind as we start the second half here in Lexington. Bjorgsen just not able to absorb that impact. There from Christensen. We saw a lot of attempts to get Bjorgsen a, a clean look at it in the first half. I think we'll see more of those in the second half. Especially since it was his senior night, his last time playing at Bell, a place where he's had so much success in the past, of course. The Sun Belt Offensive preseason player of the year has just had a phenomenal season for the Wildcats. It's not done yet, but everyone wants to go out on a high note on that last game on your home field. Hey, uh, this has been a this has been a ripe a ripe place for Bjorgsen, and he's uh, he's he's eating a lot of fruit here on this field. And with that, he is eighth all time on the Kentucky program all time scoring list. Seven goals this season, 21 goals so far for him throughout his Kentucky career. Robert Green going one on one. Doing well, just to, doing well just to produce something out of it there against two Old Dominion defenders. Kentucky will get a corner kick for that one. It's Enzo Maurice lining up for Kentucky as the Cats get set for another set piece here tonight. Switcheroo for Kentucky. Maurice and Screen will swap places. Screen is who we're used to seeing take these for the Wildcats. You see just a lone Max Miller back there between the 18 yard box and his own half. Tricky footwork there between Screen and Gutman. Just getting the wires crossed, I think. Eli Carr just thundering off the left side there, trying to make something happen. So Gavin, up top, we talked about your goals for both teams, what you thought each program would be looking to do tonight, how you thought they could accomplish it. Of course, we've talked so much about Sunbelt play and the standings and how much of a critical game this is really for both teams tonight. Right. How'd you do? How'd the first half live up to what you expected? And of course, what adjustments do these teams need to make in your eyes yeah, in you the know, second half? You know, I, 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 I said at the, at the beginning of the game before things got going, how important it was gonna be for this Old Dominion team to try and stretch this Kentucky shape, you know, that is so disciplined and so compact when they're on their game. And they've struggled to do that first half, um, you know, and, they, and, and, and it has showed. Uh, on the Kentucky side, we talked about how disciplined they were gonna be. And they have been. I said Bjorgsen, Bjorgsen, Bjorgsen. Not an easy thing to say three I times. I was just about to say it. You're just and flexing that you can say that three times. I, pr I practice at home. And we haven't quite seen what we, we haven't quite seen him in those positions and producing in the way that we have throughout the rest of the season over these past four years. But he causes such a handful for a back four on and off the ball that you know, a statistic of just the mere goals that he's scoring doesn't quite encapsulate the kind of performance that he puts into a game. And of course the attention that a defense has to pay to him opens up other opportunities for his teammates. We saw that early on with Casper Grenning. We almost saw another opportunity there. Absolutely. Rodriguez, far, far up the pitch, searching for a goal. Nosebleed territory for center backs. <laughs> he just wants everyone to know he's still got it. A little bit of a more quiet start for Nick Gutman than what we are used to seeing in the first half. Nice to see him out early trying to get involved in a little bit of action there. Yeah. 
and Kentucky, you know, really happy to just have the sting gone out of this. You know, as I said how important that first five, ten minutes was going to be for Old Dominion. You see they're, they're chomping at the bit here a little bit to get the ball and make something happen. And Kentucky will just want to subdue that, regain control going into the second half and not make life easy for Old Dominion going forward. So Ryder steals that one back for the Wildcats. See again, Old Dominion just, just sitting back. Happy for Kentucky to be in possession and have the ball. We'll take that one. Robert Screen not happy about it. Rodriguez slides that one. He was happy about that yeah, one. Yeah, and, and he let he let Old Dominion know. Christensen doing well, just stepping up into that space. It's always it's always tricky when a center back steps in like that. The shot and a header, but it, that one will go high. Kentucky, of course, up 1-0 over Old Dominion here in the second half. Here's a look at how the rest of the conference is currently playing out. You see West Virginia and Georgia Southern also in the second half with West Virginia up 2-1 in that one. Georgia stayed up early on in the second half against South Carolina, 1-0 for them as well. All of those results tonight will certainly have an impact on these standings. You see what they are right now. Kentucky up top, followed by Marshall and then Old Dominion. But West Virginia and Georgia State are right there as well. A lot could change over these next couple of days as we get closer to the Sun Belt Tournament actually taking place in early November. We've been saying it all night. There's a lot, to, a lot yet to play for. We're not quite there yet. And of course, it does complicate things a little bit that Kentucky and Marshall ended with a draw earlier this season. So if it does have to go to a tiebreak situation, we're going to go far down that list, right? Because if they end up as the top teams in the conference, Things are going to get a little complicated, okay? Because the head-to-head -head winner would be the higher seed. And then you have to look at the conference goal differential after that point. So, of course, there would be no head-to-head -head winner between Kentucky and Marshall. So you'd have to take a look at the goal differential stats throughout the season. And then if you're still tied after that, it gets really complicated, okay? You keep going down the list to step three, step four, step five, but our personal favorite, Gavin, not to speak for you, but I think we do agree, is number six, the possibility of a coin flip. I'm here for, I'm here for the coin toss. Of course, we don't think that we'll get down to the coin toss situation because right now Kentucky does have the advantage in gold differential, plus 12 compared to Marshall's plus seven. And they'll There's add another goal. one to it as Bjorgelsen comes home for that one. We've talked about him all night, waiting for that perfect opportunity. And the moment was finally right for Kentucky's golden senior. Yeah, he just squeezed that into the bottom corner. He stayed patient all through the first half in these opening minutes. And we see Goodman here just to keep the play alive. A lot of players might let that run out over the end line, keep things alive, and there he is. Beautiful assist by Koopman there. Big, brash, beautiful finish from Bjorgelsen. And from one senior to another here at the Bell on their final regular season home game as Wildcats. Of course, that puts Kentucky up 2-0 over the Monarchs. And the fans of Big Blue Nation have something to celebrate. There's the minion we were talking about. Shout out to the minion. He has to be happy to finally see the Bjorgelsen goal we have been waiting on all night long. A lot of air in those Vuvuzelas. They're not stopping. Hey, and despite the temperature getting a little bit cooler here as we're getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving, great to see 
A lot of Kentucky fans out here and some traveling Old Dominion fans as well. And the Big Blue Nation is certainly a fan base that buys into any program's postseason. So if Kentucky is able to clinch the ability to host part of the Sun Belt Conference here in Lexington, this crowd will grow even more as the stakes get higher and higher. And that's a huge, huge advantage over Conference USA, being able to host these games at home as well, Maggie. Familiar pictures there. Enzo Maurice and Robert Screen over the ball. What a dangerous duo. Maurice will take that one. A couple of headers for Kentucky. Neither of them are able to find the back of the net. Really crowded box on that one. Here's the kick by Maurice. They put the play into action. Bjorgelsen first. Trying to find Bjorgelsen there at the top of the six. Jorgelson trying again, this time going one-on-one, -on -one, daring the keeper to try something funny. But he will not, because he sees Jorgelson coming right at him. Statham's done well. Statham's done well. Got himself in the right position, got his hands up early. We've talked about Old Dominion's big win over Marshall earlier this season when the Thundering Herd was ranked fourth in the country. And Satham was very effective in that one. Six saves on the night, including two in the last 25 minutes when the Herd had three straight corner kicks. He's been busy again tonight. We see Michael Eberly just stepping up being that lone target man up top. Jenkins dropping himself out a little bit wider here, trying to stretch that Kentucky back four. And here we see things trying to get a little chippy again. We mentioned it in the first half when Kentucky went up by one. You can just feel the attitude and, and the sort of urgency change when that becomes the case. And now with a 2-0 lead in the 57th minute, it's even more true now. Yeah, and this is just old I mean, just have to get themselves out of their own half and look beyond. Try and make something stick up top with Everly or Jenkins. It's going to be a long second half here if they can't regain any possession. Hear that all Dominion coaching staff just pleading with their team to find some defensive shape. And they see Bjorgelsen right. alone up there close to the net. Right, just very disjointed. And that's where Kentucky can really take advantage of you because the Wildcats are such a disciplined team. You don't catch them out of position very often. Right. You know, you look at how quickly they get back into that shape, that back four, and Soraya and Clay Holstad sitting right in front of them. And it's a tremendous sort of block of six there that they put together that's, I won't say impenetrable, but down near. And this is, you know, a game like this, this time in the season, it's important for Kentucky just to manage this game physically as they look to turn them in play and not be chasing their tail too much. You know, it doesn't matter whether they win this game 2-0, 4-0, 14-0, whatever.
What's important is that they keep guys healthy, keep them injury free, and not completely whack going into that next part. Absolutely, and of course, Kentucky does go on the road on Tuesday, traveling to Columbia, South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks. That will officially end the regular season. So we'll have a much better picture of what the postseason will look like after that one. And if they can hold on to this 2-0 lead, that will make that trip all the more enjoyable. South Carolina, not a bad place to be going here at the end of October. South Carolina currently seventh place in the Sun Belt standings. Kentucky just setting up their usual high block. Bjorgerson and those three players right behind them. Maurice. Granning, Gutman. Jorgensen trying to set himself up there, but it's intercepted by the Monarchs. I think Maurice just trying to let that one go and trying to be clever. A bit cute with that one into Bjorgensen. Here's where we got to see something happen for Old Dominion. They have the space to do it. They try to break away toward the net, but they're unable to find the momentum. Miller doing well, just getting himself between Everly and the ball. Taken care of by his counterpart there, Luis Grasso. A lot of traffic out there on Alumni Drive tonight. <laughs> You're getting a good view of it. Yeah. We haven't been over on this side of the field as much. We haven't gotten to see it. Instead, you're over on the other corner, you're looking at Kroger Field. Big Blue Nation getting ready for tomorrow. Certainly a big opportunity for those Wildcats. And here is one for these Wildcats as Gutman finds himself with plenty of space to take a shot on goal. But that one is quickly cleaned up. And just rolled back out towards yeah, the Yeah, just couldn't get a strike, but he did well to get himself half a yard on his unfavored left foot. And Kentucky just has so many guys on this roster who are capable of doing that. 13 Wildcats have scored this year. Three players in the top 10 in the Sun Belt in terms of number of shots per game. Grenning, of course, leading the conference in that regard. But three of the top 10 is very impressive for an offensive ta right. attack. We do a lot of talking about that, that, that man up top, Bjorgerson, but you're spoiled for riches here in this Kentucky team going forward. Ben Damji down there, readying himself. Great position by Max Miller. Right place, right time for him, and it was certainly no accident. You could see his eyes. That's better from Old Dominion. Much better, that'll put some air in their lungs. Certainly more aggressive on that one, of course. Still cleaned up by Casper Moles in the box for the Wildcats. It's half the battle, and you look, at, you look at the difference in this shape here. Mm. 
That was the Monarchs' first shot so far on the night. Kentucky with nine as we are in the 64th minute. You see them just thinking, thinking about getting themselves up higher. When you sit back against this, against this Kentucky team when they have possession of the ball, they will tear you apart. Screen to Gutman. Just off the hands. He's doing well just looking for that near post. And again, Kentucky picking up first balls, second balls, and getting shots away, shots on target. Wouldn't he love a goal tonight? Absolutely. Great moment for both of those players tonight. There's a passing of the torch element to these substitutions between Damji and Bjorgelsen. Corner kick by the Wildcats, get it to Gutman. And Enzo Marie's was just a step behind on that one. Louis Beckett looking around them, wondering who else is going to go and press with him. I was just wondering the same thing. <laughs> and we see that next next in line there, Eli Carr. And it's hard. you got to press as a team. Sneak attack by Ben Damji. Keeps things going in the Cats' favor. I don't think he knew just how much time he had once he once he stole that ball. And for the Wildcats now, just maintaining control of possession. Old Dominion making it very easy, no pressure on the ball. <laughs> Granning hunting for another one. We'll take a look back at his first. That happened early on in the first half. Off an assist from Nick Gutman. Yet another assist for Gutman. Oh, what a wonderfully placed ball from Gutman. We didn't talk about it enough earlier. And then in the second half, this should count as two assists, I think. And then eventually it gets to Bjorgelsen for that long-awaited goal we wanted to see from number nine tonight. One of the most exciting offensive players in the conference. Certainly on display right now for the Wildcats. Yeah, certainly. He, he finds assists be better than maybe most players do in, in the whole country. He's unselfish. And he's no stranger to finding him himself. So that's how we got here. Kentucky up 2-0 now as we approach the 68th minute of play at the bell. And yet Kentucky still feels like they're being the more aggressive team in this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason they're 2-0 up here. They've, you know, you watch them in transition, they, they work hard to win the ball back. And, you know, we just start to see all Dominion do that in flashes and start to get themselves higher up the pitch and put the likes of Grasso and Rodriguez under a little bit of pressure. If you don't ask them any questions, Kentucky will be happy just to dictate the pace and the direction of what goes on here. And offensively, they certainly have been dynamic, really across the board. You see how highly Kentucky is ranking right now in goals, assists, differential, shots on goal. Really all of those major categories we've harped on here tonight. Kentucky's been able to make them work in their favor. Right, Kentucky's a team, it's a program, it's a team that knows how to take care of business.
You see just how quick that Kentucky, that Kentucky team gets back into a defensive shape. Robert Screen getting the better of Liam Thomas. I'm going to be hearing these vuvuzelas in my sleep tonight, Maggie, I think. <laughs> I think everyone who's watching this broadcast right now probably feels the same way. You know, I don't live far from here. I, I bet my dogs are hearing them. Is this better or worse than thunder for a dog? You know, I think it depends on which dog I'm, th I'm thinking of. One of, our, one of ours is terrified of thunder, and the other one that we picked up at the Humane Society is, you know, not as interested in being afraid. Here's a look at the seniors that were honored here tonight earlier at the Bell. Six players who all got that coveted handshake and hug from the head man in charge, Johan Settergren. We had family and friends here in attendance, jerseys that were framed, and there really is something special about a senior night, Gavin. Yeah, as you, as you walk out the door, Kentucky as a senior, it's hard not to look around and feel like you're a part of something incredibly special and long rich history of soccer here at the University of Kentucky. And what an interesting feeling it must be to think this could be our last game here. It probably won't be at this point with so many options in terms of different results that could result in Kentucky getting to host at least part of the Sun Belt Conference here. Yeah, there's certainly an ephemeral feeling that you get on nights like tonight. Because you just never know when you might be out on this pitch again. Graining doing well just to get himself into some more space. So good, 1v1. And he drives from wide, from wide positions like that into those more narrow positions. And he's not afraid to get a shot away. A frustrated Miseroli there, I think. And as we said earlier, it'll be important for Kentucky just to stay healthy, stay rested, and stay prepared. Just a lazy tackle. It's hard to look at this Old Dominion shape and think that think that anything is going to happen for them. A lot of one-man armies here at times. And it's so different than the approach they took in that other top five matchup when they took on Marshall. Right, and that's always that's always the test when you go out and you get a big result, is can you do it again? And we've not seen that so far. We're seeing a different Old Dominion team than we saw against Marshall. Just under 20 minutes left to play here at the Bell. Casper Grenning's with some luxurious time and space in the final third. Sarita and Thomas both in a hurry on that one. Screen. <laughs> Just trying to find a rhythm in possession and also put a little bit of pressure on Kentucky. 
rhythm, I think, is the key word there. We haven't seen as right. much of that as I was expecting to see tonight. No, and it's on it's on both sides of the ball. You know, we talk about these these one man Rambo runs, as I call them, of trying to go and get pressure on that Kentucky back four, that Kentucky midfield when they're in possession, and they're able to get out with one or two passes. Very difficult to do it on your own. Substitutions here for both teams as we get set up for another Wildcat corner kick. Luis Grasso checking out for Kentucky. Loud applause by the Big Blue Nation for him. And for, of course, Trey Asensio coming in, taking the place of Grasso right in front of Michael Statham. Nick Gutman off screen, just hanging out the top of the box. Old Dominion gets the first crack at it. That one will go flying over the student section. Rodriguez is intent on not leaving tonight without a goal. He has won this season, it can be done. And he was certainly looking for one there. Jonas Smallbach playing it close to the bone there. involved tonight has really lucked out with such a beautiful night considering it is the end of October almost Halloween right. weekend hey, I guess it's Friday night it is Halloween weekend officially and to be this late and still this nice great conditions that's great we soccer. walked in the air conditioner was on I'm saying let's get these windows open and of course let these beautiful sounds in as well have to open the windows Max Miller getting himself forward here, combining with Creek. So Toronto Athena there from Creek. And Miller trying to do the right thing, get the ball just to the top of the top of the six-yard box there. But you know, at, the, at this point of season, I expect I expect better from Miller. You know, he, he has only raised the bar higher and higher. And find a Kentucky player. Sometimes you get into those positions and you can't believe just how much space you have. Jorgelson back in the game now for Kentucky. Nice little breather for him on the sidelines. But Kentucky didn't want to go too long without their leading scorer in this game. Rodriguez will pass it to him. And the Wildcats are just all over Liam Thomas. Just trying to get beyond. Finally, a couple of minutes of some energy from Old Dominion. You just worry it's a little bit too late. And this is what you need to see here with the two goal deficit. Bjorgelsen with a handful of Christensen's shirt. Unnecessary. Check that, racer.
Martin Sreida, hasn't he been good tonight? He really has been, and for a player who doesn't typically get the start to be put in this position so late in the year, you don't want to say surprising, but certainly beautiful he's, save. Yeah, he certainly he certainly earned it. Anytime he's come into a game, you know, as a midfielder, it's sometimes not easy to come into games and make an impact, and he's done and he's done it well all season. Ben Danji on the hunt. Creek to Damji really does have a nice touch to it, but that one just not quite strong enough to sneak it in over Statham. Eli Carr, Lone Wolf up there, trying to make anything happen. Eighty minutes off the clock here in Lexington. Max Miller finds himself out on the other side of the field. Kentucky 16 shots so far this night, nine of which have been on goal. Only one shot so far for the Monarchs. And we see just when Kentucky get this joined, that Max Miller out of position, Clay Holstad high up the field, just how quickly they're able to reset, regroup, and get back into position again. I'm really, I think that's been the crux of it for me. You know, we talk about talent all the time and how talented all these players are that we get to watch, Maggie, but but it's hard work. It certainly is, and for them to be rewarded in a way with that number two ranking and so much momentum at this point heading into the postseason, of course. They got a good taste of it last week with that big win over Indiana on the road. Another one tonight to close out the home game with the kind of play we've seen here tonight, really across the board from Nick Gutman included. He tries to get another one off. That one's booted out by the Monarchs. Jorgensen just sneaking himself into the top of the six yard box there. He is so gifted at that. Had that ball gone through, it was sitting on a silver platter. You could tell he knew it. To look up at the sky like that in the last moment, like, oh, I almost had that one. You can tell Jorgensen definitely wears his heart on his sleeve in that way. Green lining up for another corner kick here for the Wildcats. A float a ball. Brennan Creek rattling the side netting. Creek with good contact here. Hey, he's not a million miles away, just outside that left hand post. Look to get that one again. The fans in attendance thought that one was in. You started to hear the applause, and then that last second, a little slight deflation there when you realize it just missed the edge of it. These fans just catching their breath again, ready for another round. They're having to catch their breath. They have to all be out of air. Listen to them. <laughs> the Lexington Symphony. Time is beginning to run out on us in this one, 83 minutes into this match. So we have to once again bring it up, the Sun Belt Conference Tournament right around the corner, and the race is still on with a win tonight. Kentucky does clinch the ability to host. Currently sitting in first place. Still a lot of matches to cross off the board, including tonight big ones for Marshall, West Virginia, other teams that are up top near the, the top of the list of the standings. Old Dominion, of course, currently sitting in third place. This certainly changes that tonight, and we'll see the rest of the regular season games wrap up early next week. Right. What a mark Kentucky have been able to make here. A, mar a, a, a marshal to boot in this conference. They've really raised the level in a conference that was already a fantastic soccer conference. Things did not get easier for those teams that nope. left Conference USA 
No way, and that's what you want. Talking with Coach Settergren preseason and even early on into this year, that was definitely a point of emphasis for him. He said, we've always played tough teams, okay? Conference USA was a hard conference too, but to level up even farther elevates our own level of play and creates opportunities like this one. Late in the season, first in the conference, taking on third in the conference, a lot still at stake as we get close to those postseason games. But that's what makes it fun. Yeah, you always want to be playing the toughest schedule you can play. That's the only way you grow, that's the only way you develop players and really see where you're at. And especially for Kentucky coming off such a historic season like the one we saw last year where they did reach the round of 16 in the NCAA tournament for just the fourth time ever, but the third time in the last four seasons. They know all about playing for the postseason and tough games in the regular season is exactly what gets you ready for that. Right, and that will be a lesson they'll have learned in there about, about what it means to prepare to go into those single elimination games. And if they are able to remain undefeated until then, that certainly helps their case as well. It certainly does. And again, no overtimes in the regular season this year. But that will be back in play as we get into the postseason. That changes things a bit too. Especially for a team like Kentucky that has had five draws so far this season. We've talked about it. Kentucky, one of three teams still undefeated in the NCAA Division I. Here are the other ones. Number one, Washington. Number three, Duke. Gavin, it's no surprise. The three undefeated teams, they're ranked first, second, and third. A lot of top teams there. A lot of competition going into, into you know, conference tournaments around the country. It gets harder and harder to see as the season goes on. And if we're lucky, we'll see... At least a couple of those teams have to play each other right. in the postseason, and that's where things get really interesting. And of course, here we're we're ending games and ties this season, but when we start looking at overtimes and and, and absolute wins, it's uh, all points on the board. Dominion just trying to make something happen here, opening themselves up. And we see the ways that Kentucky tried to exploit that here. This might be the quietest we've seen this Kentucky coaching staff all season during the game. <laughs> Not too much to complain about in this one. It's always nice as a coach, I think, when you can sort of take your hands off the wheel and all the work is done when players step over the line and they take care of business. Especially for a team like this one with six seniors, several of which are key starters, guys who have had major impacts on this game and can be trusted. Yeah. To take care of business themselves, like you said. And that's the key word there, trust, isn't it? And it's it's earned, not given. Well, they've certainly earned it all season, and we've seen them continue to do so here tonight, taking care of business like Kentucky's been able to do all season, of course. Still about two minutes left on the board, but Kentucky with a 2-0 lead over Old Dominion. Place, right time, and able to find Enzo Maurice. Just like he always seems to be. A cool cam collected. What a character. A 
hopeful ball over the top to Liam Thomas. And now a slightly deflated looking Liam Thomas as he hears the announcers say one minute left in this one in Lexington. At this stage, anything's a consolation. It's been a beautiful senior night here at the Bell, but this will not be the last time Kentucky seniors take this field because with the win tonight, the Wildcats are clenching the ability to host in the Sun Belt Conference, either a one seed or the two seed. We won't know that after this result tonight, but we are certainly getting closer to that decision and a win tonight definitely gives Kentucky even more momentum heading into conference play, conference postseason conference play, I should say. And this Big Blue Nation knows all about it as it begins to boil here at the end of this game. And that will do it in Lexington, Kentucky with the 2-0 win over the Monarchs. Itor Bjorgelsen, one of the goals tonight for Kentucky, the senior. Casper Grenning with the other. And the fans have plenty of reasons to celebrate because not only